no one knows who you are. So what you should be focusing on instead is the value you provide. If your video won't get through, it's, uh, it's not the algorithm, it's the people who didn't watch it. Zcast, Zika's podcast. Hi and welcome to the next episode of the Zcast. Zcast is Zika's podcast. Oh, a podcast at Zika's guitars. How clever! Yeah, it's, <laughs> we, we were very creative. How long? From, how long did it did it take to come up with this? I one minute. One minute. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We are sitting here with Beatrix Kovac from Hungary. Today we are going to talk to a very young and successful classical guitarist. However, successful not because of uh, giving concerts on a daily basis, but because she has found her own way of uh, living as a musician and earning money and working and uh, keeping that passion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For fulfilling my passion for the instrument. Exactly. Finding my way. So, because um, the usual way to live as a musician is to give concerts or to organize concert for yourself and to teach. So this is the most common way. It is, it is. But you do it in a different way, in a very interesting way. And I think it's a very more modern way and it will be even more in the future. Beatrix, tell us a little bit about yourself. So you, I know that you studied classical guitar. In Hungary, right? Yeah, I did. I did. Um, I studied uh, at a Hungarian music university. I got my master's degree there and I finished my studies right at the beginning of the pandemic and the close, uh, close downs, uh, which was basically the biggest push for me to, um, I don't know, to, to, to start something new in my life, you know, to just, um, well, first of all, to start streaming. And um, so music school or music university uh, was under close down and... Uh, you did have uh, online lessons also in the university. I did have online lessons. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. For, for a while I did my online lessons. But, you know, I, I, think, I think everyone felt this, um, I don't know, not boredom, but I was getting much more lazy, mm -hmm. la lazier than, than I should have been. So after just, after a time... I didn't have something to actually prepare to. I didn't have a daily motivation. I didn't have um, exact goals, what I was doing, why I was doing the things I was doing. Mm -hmm. So I had to come up with something. And I don't know if you are a Reddit user. Do you use Reddit? Uh, sometimes if I have a question, I mm -hmm. will write it on Google and uh, there, there are a lot of suggestions on Reddit, Reddit. But, I, but I really don't know what... Yeah, Reddit is funny because um, Reddit is the darkest pit, mm -hmm. you know, the dar darkest pit and the most valuable uh, place on the internet at the same time. It has the biggest contrast I've ever seen on the internet. So at the same time, it's, it's, a, it's an extremely weird place, but um, I can thank everything I have now for Reddit because that time they launched their live streaming um, function, live mm -hmm. streaming, I don't know, live streaming function, yes. And everyone was able to start a live stream on their uh, from their phone. So I put my little potato phone mm -hmm. right in front of me. I was streaming in, I don't know, 10 FPS or something. So it was okay. like, it was horrible, it's horrible like, quality. Yeah. With a lot of pixels. The... It was like when you, you know, draw pictures on the side of the paper and you draw them. That's yeah. how it okay. looked. That's wow. how it looked. Fancy. <laughs> it was, that was my first fancy live stream. <laughs> mm. But what it, what happened is the algorithm puts you on the front page from time to time. There are, let's say, 25 streams at the same time because mm -hmm. it wasn't so popular at the beginning. So uh, there was a huge rotation who's ending up on the front page. And if you ended up on the front page, sometimes you had 12,000 viewers, 25,000 viewers, or even, even more. I had a guy who said 
uh, I mean, I, I met a guy who mm -hmm. said he had one million views, uh, concurrent view viewers okay. at the wow. same time. So mm -hmm. that, that was an insane number. And basically that's how it started. But uh, what did you stream? Uh, I was streaming my classical guitar repertoire. I okay. was playing just I, I was just playing pieces. I sat down and I was saying, "Hey guys, this is what I'm working on now. This mm -hmm. is a cool piece by Merz, by Bach, by anyone." And I just I just played it. And of course, there were were lots of trolls. <laughs> of course, we know that. Yeah, in but social media, you find a lot of people these, just really appreciated yeah. the mm -hmm. music and really appreciated um, the effort and uh, the dedication mm -hmm. you know you put into this in instrument and uh, and that's how i started i started to show up on reddit uh like three times a week and people mm -hmm. started to recognize me and they started to ask uh about you know if i have an album if i have ah, you cool. know a youtube channel and that that indicated to to move you know, to move on, to start a YouTube channel, to put together a nice Instagram page, to start streaming on Twitch, which mm -hmm. is uh, which is the main live streaming platform nowadays. And as well as, you know, later my Patreon page and my album, which I released um, a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. So um, it was also at the same time a new, let's say, motivation for you to play guitar and to practice. Yes, because, yes, it uh, gave me a reason. In the time of COVID, uh, if you have no concerts and you sit at home and you play somehow for yourself mm -hmm. and uh, you, it was for you a motivation to play more and to yeah, practice, prepare new. First repertoire. of all, yes, it was a motivation because you had an audience yes. suddenly. Yeah, fine. Yeah, okay. it was. It was such a big revelation to finally have people to play for to share share yes. the art mm -hmm. with to share the music with it was uh it it gave me so much and um well first of all i started it to have a reason you know to have a reason to to practice and to well not not to practice to perfect the pieces or to perfect the yeah. repertoire because, i have yeah you were at the end of your studying yes you end meant, of the studies. And it means you had already a big repertoire and... Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But at the same time, what I really did not expect, and it was a huge advantage of it, is uh, that I I kind of reconnected to people. Because, mm -hmm. you know, everyone was a bit lonely. Everyone just... Yeah, everyone was closed into their apartment that time. And, and we got disconnected. So this little thing made me realize that, okay, this is a way to share music. And this is also a way to connect to peop actual real people mm -hmm. on, the, on the internet, on the, around the globe. And uh, that really made me to, to push forward this. Yeah. And at the same time, after that uh, streaming, because you said you were streaming two or three times in a week. Yes, I do. And uh, you had at the same time your Instagram channel, or was it a new channel? New it was Instagram already. It was already. Oh, yeah, Reddit it was already, already. working. But mm -hmm. um, the re so the good part of Reddit was uh, that it gave me a huge discoverability. You know, normally okay. mm -hmm. you as a small guitarist, you don't get this kind of traffic. You don't. I don't know if you play a concert. 12,000 people won't show up. Uh, yeah. It's it's not it's not average. Maybe I don't know. I'm not saying it never happens. It's just it's just not the average uh, numbers we work with. Uh, so a lot of people just found me there. They opened Reddit and I was I was on the front page. They found me, and from there I kind of directed people to my other channels, saying, mm -hmm. "Hey guys, if you enjoyed this." piece played by, you know, if, if you enjoyed this piece by Merz, by Bach, by Antonio Jose, mm -hmm. head over to my Instagram page, head over to my YouTube channel, check out my Patreon page and, uh, I don't know, join to our Discord server where we have a lovely community for classical guitar lovers. And I try to, yeah, redirect people to, to my other, other platforms. Okay, this is a very good idea. This is also what we do at Zika's Guitars. Yeah. I know. We have also a TikTok channel. I know, yes. <laughs> and uh, we try to connect the people from YouTube to Instagram, from Instagram to TikTok. So you have to somehow offer 
um, to different people, different platforms. Yes, of course. And uh, this is also what you what you've done. You also teach online. I do. I do. Yeah. Um, so or, or let's start like this, um, because uh, you have to leave as a musician. You have to earn money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And um, how do you do that? <laughs> so what, what are the I mean, I th I'm I'm sure that there is not only one way to earn money. It's not mm -hmm. like, okay, I will do one stream in Patreon every week and I can live with that. I'm, I think there are different um, yeah, possibilities to earn money. Mm -hmm. How do you do that or what is your experience? Well, uh, it's funny because uh, it's different. It, it looks completely different every single month. But mm. uh, generally, I can say that um, I diversify my, I don't know, my income streams. Mm -hmm. uh, and for example, one of my earliest or yeah, one of one of my oldest income streams is is Twitch, where people can subscribe to my channel to watch my daily practice sessions and uh, and uh, talking sessions, stuff like that. So I I have a. Um, my income heavily depends on my followers and my listeners, my mm -hmm. viewers, uh, from this perspective. I also generate revenue from, from YouTube like you guys do. So mm -hmm. people who watch ads or people who watch um, videos on my channel, as well as my album. So if I have uh, album sales, like digital sales as well, mm -hmm. or physical sales, also generates income. And... Um, as well as I'm thinking what's worth mentioning. <laughs> I mean, on the Twitch, I'm, I'm just curious, um, how does it work? You, it's a streaming platform, mm -hmm. the Twitch, and uh, the people can subscribe to mm -hmm. you. And um, what, what do you do there? Do you play different pieces you, or do you teach? On Twitch, uh -huh. or do you practice? Uh, what What do you do if you stream a video? Okay, let's say I go live and uh, I'm streaming for maybe four hours, four hours straight. I'm mm -hmm. live for four hours, and uh, I'm practicing in um, somewhat like a Pomodoro technique. So I have a practice. I, I have a timer mm -hmm. on, and I'm practicing a piece. I'm working on something. And then I have a break time when I mostly react to the chat mm -hmm. or mostly uh, answer questions. If, you know, there are, there are typical questions which are coming up pretty often, like guitar recommendations or technique uh, suggestions. Mm -hmm. And these are things people can ask but there are, you know, more casual talks. Um, we we have a lot, lots of casual talks because, you know, we we have a community over there for people. Some some of my viewers are uh, from two and a half years ago, or mm -hmm. you know, since the very beginning of my journey of my online journey. So we have just more general talks as well. But uh, I do this pom Pomodoro technique like uh, practice sessions. And and uh, we are talking about different topics. Um, that's that's what the type okay. of content. Now the subscription means you buy ad free watching for mm -hmm. an entire month because Twitch likes to put random ads, you know, like YouTube. So yeah. Twitch likes to put ads in the middle of the streams, and it's really it can be really annoying. So uh, a couple of dollars per month, you can buy ad free watching. And, uh, and you will and receive a part of that money. Yes, yes. Okay. It's a shared Good. revenue, just mm -hmm. like on, on, YouTube. on YouTube. You okay. you get uh, one uh, exact percent, one percent of uh, of that revenue generated, and that's how you make money on Twitch mainly. There are also tips, you know, like uh, the regular donation kind mm -hmm. of like system. Su super super thanks. Yeah, exactly, on exactly mm -hmm. the same. Yes, cool. it's very similar. That's how it works on Twitch. So I have these streaming um, kind of incomes. Uh, I generate revenue after after Spotify, after after selling music online. Mm -hmm. These all, all these kind of things. And uh, my other big chunk is, um, uh, for example, um, online concerts. 
mm-hmm. online concerts, especially, for example, I had uh, online concerts mostly from uh, Western European countries or, or America. That's, that's the most experience I had. And uh, it's just, just like a concert, but I'm streaming it from my, my little studio room mm-hmm. at home, sitting there. You know, I'm getting ready. You know, I'm, I'm, wearing, in my, I'm wearing my pajamas. And yeah. um, 20 minutes before the concert, I, I get dressed. Yeah. <laughs> and two minutes after the concert, I, I put my pajamas mm. back. <laughs> Yeah, th- this is the good thing because you are <laughs> doing everything at home. Yeah, it's so nice. you're very flexible and um, it has its advantages and disadvantages. Yeah. But but uh, I certainly enjoy the advantages it it uh, means. Uh, so this is the other type of income I generate. I also work with brands and and different companies for um, for content we do together. Mm-hmm. I have these. Uh, I have partnerships. Uh, and uh, and that also generates revenue to me. And the final thing is that I give online lessons on every Thursday. Thursday is, is a teaching day. I share lots of slots, free slots, and people just people can just book into those slots. If they see a free slot, mm-hmm. they can book into it up to yeah for up to up to five lessons per week. I think. So guys, if you are interested, third. On third day, Thursday, Thursdays, <laughs> um, Beatrix may have still a few free slots. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, but wh- where should they find it? Do you have a website? If someone wants to have an online lesson, with uh, you? website is under construction. But okay. I think by the time people will see this podcast, I think it's going to work. Ah, okay. It should be. But I have a, a booking page. I don't know if Just, you're up to. We are going okay. to leave a link, a recommendation okay, yeah, link, do. in the description mm-hmm. down below. Yeah, here, on the table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. a link. A link would be nice. Cool. And how 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 does it work with the um, cooperations with the with different brands? So, mm-hmm. for example, if you're convinced by a brand, uh, I know that you have. Uh, you are Soundbrenner. S- Soundbrenner. It's I, over I, there. <laughs> I think it's a really cool thing. It and is. I it is. saw it for the first time. Uh, I think you're working with them since two th- two years, maybe? One year. One uh, year? Yeah, I picked okay. them up. I saw that f- the first time year. on your channel and I was really impressed by that. Uh, it is cool, right? It is cool, yeah. Yeah. Um, there are... So it's, it's hard to talk about this because uh, there's no two partnerships which are the same, you know, every, every exactly. work it's is so different. different. Mm-hmm. I think it's the same for you guys. When someone comes in to record with you, even, even though, you know, okay, this is how kind of how you work and mm-hmm. how, I don't know, recording sessions work. It never will be the same. There are small differences and, uh, and absolutely. small, small yeah. things you tweak mm-hmm. a little bit, uh, which is absolutely cool. So that's why I enjoy uh, partnerships a lot. Mm, first of all, well, there are two main um, partnership types. One is, for example, what I'm doing with um, with with, with uh, Soundbrenner. Mm-hmm. It's called affiliate affiliate marketing. So you get a certain uh, percentage of the revenue generated through your link so yeah. if anyone okay. buys mm-hmm. uh if anyone buys something through your link through, links, you through your yeah mm-hmm. artist link you will get a certain percentage of uh, of the revenue that has been generated okay so that's that's uh, the most popular i think that's the most standard thing i'm only doing this with with sound runner because it's uh for me it's a bit hard to keep track of these kind of partnerships i'm not a huge fan of that uh but sound runner is I just really like I just really like mm. the brand. It works really good. I think yeah, it's an amazing yeah. brand. Mm, and the other type of partnership is, for example, maybe you have seen uh, on my channel the Enya guitar. It was a silent guitar. So ah, the silent yeah, the silent guitar. Mm-hmm. So if there's a product uh, which I find interesting, which I would like to show to people, or which I see value in, mm-hmm. uh, we came up with with the content together with the mm. with the company for example they reach out uh they they set an offer uh or if they don't have an offer mm-hmm. i will ask for the offer and if we find you know the common uh yeah if, if we find find uh, an agreement, an agreement yeah. yeah if it came came in a common agreement 
uh, we start brainstorming. We figure out what exactly the thing they are looking for, what I can provide. Mm -hmm. And I write a plan. I always write a plan. Sometimes, for example, if I'm uh, preparing an Instagram reel for a brand, I'm writing it down by seconds. Like first three seconds, this is what you're going to see. Next five seconds, this is what is going to be happen and that and mm. that. I write a caption and I send it to them for revision, of course. Revisions yeah. are, are in it. And if everyone's fine with the content, then uh, it's it's going to be published. Mm -hmm. That's how most of my partnerships work. So um, everything sounds very interesting and exciting that uh, you don't have only one way of incomings. And, um, but I think what is also important to know is how much work and how much time you invest to to achieve all these um, possibilities mm -hmm. because um, i think the people should know that uh, you cannot have such a big um, social media platforms and partnerships uh, within one or two weeks yeah that's right so it took i think for you also a few months or oh years, years. we're years. talking about okay. years years yeah yeah i think um i think we tend to forget especially you know my generation is not famous of its patience <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, and okay. we tend to forget how this is not this is not a sprint this is a marathon and uh, and if we we plan for a sprint we will you know we will bleed out <laughs> yeah at the uh, first um first half of it or even even more quicker yeah, I know, you know, the toughest part is when you look at someone else, maybe your age, maybe maybe even younger than mm. you and see, oh, wow, this video has 5 million views. I could do that. And of course, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Everyone can do that. Um, and you post your video and it gets like 30 views and, yeah. <laughs> and it's very, very demotivating. So, mm -hmm. so you push you push yourself, you say, okay, first video, and you post one more, and you post one more, and you expect, okay, maybe the 20 should be something, and it's still nothing. Mm -hmm. And and guess what? For a lot of people, it took, it takes maybe a hundred videos to, you know, to break through on YouTube. Mm -hmm. For some, yeah, there are lucky, lucky people, or there are, there are really, really good people who, I mean, are really uh, extremely talented people who just get through on the algorithm. But for most people, it takes years to get through this. What I also like to do personally, if I see someone's amazing post, which makes me feel insecure about my work, that, oh, no, mm -hmm. this is this is so amazing. My channel is nothing close to that. I wish I could be like, I, I wish I wish my I don't know, my, my latest video, which is, I think, amazing, could get more views. Uh, I wish more people would see this video. So then I just stopped thinking about this. I go to that channel, I scroll back, and mm. I watch the first video on the channel. And guess mm. what? In most cases, it's it's not good. I'm, I, I'm sorry for saying it. It's mm -hmm. not good. The first yeah. video, no one makes a good first video. Yeah, First videos sure. are, are almost never good, mm. <laughs> except mm. for some cases, but uh, it's almost, almost never good. And uh, they had to make, that person had to make that first video in order to get that video I saw, in order to get that yes, amazing exactly. video mm -hmm. that broke through and I saw that. Uh, and that's something we easily, you know, easily forget or look over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... It will take yeah, a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, um, yeah, a few months or years mm -hmm. and also a lot of work. So how many hours usually? I mean, it depends. It's always it different. It really depends. But in general, what would you say? How many hours do you invest in, uh, in a usual working day of you? For it? That's, so, that's so difficult. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I don't know. Um, so all my days look differently. Let's say on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, those are my streaming days. So I stream for four hours. Mm -hmm. uh, that takes a lot out of me. It's really tiring. So I work that four hour. And in the morning, maybe I, 
I do one hour of admin work, like emails and mm -hmm. uh, and some um, arrangements, and uh, one or two hours of brainstorming. I think I don't work more than eight hours uh, daily, and. I have days when I work way less. So if I feel that, okay, I'm tired and I can't, I can't do quality work. If I feel that I mm -hmm. can do quality work, I just take that day off. Yeah. I'm just saying, okay, I'm not working today. I need to recharge. And that's the beauty of my work that I can take a day off or two to recharge yeah, my, my creative batteries. Yeah. I need my creative batteries yeah. to recharge. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, if I'm in a really good flow, and I don't know, sometimes after a long work day, I sit down in front of my PC and I say, okay, let's edit this video. Let's, let's give it two hours of editing. Six hours later, mm -hmm. you know, 2 a.m. in the morning, yeah. I'm looking around, yeah. what happened? Where mm -hmm. did the time go? So I can't, I can't say an exact number. What I, I know is that it's uh, something you can't really, you know, switch on and off. So mm -hmm. even when I'm not working, I'm kind of working because I yeah, see because something. Because you're thinking about something. Yes, I'm something. thinking. Uh, it's, yeah. And it's annoying sometimes that, you know, I'm looking at something and I'm thinking about, um, you know, not, not that how, to, how I could make this into a content because like, mm -hmm. it sounds very material, but I just storage it. You know, I just put it into a box in my mind because I feel, ah, oh, this piece of idea, this piece of knowledge might be useful later. I mm -hmm. will put it here later. I will put it aside yeah. for now. And that can be a bit uh, too much sometimes. And I can turn it all on and off. <laughs> Do you have a suggestion for people oh. like you who want to also try to live as a musician? Um somehow in the similar way what you are doing now mm -hmm. and um, let's say for for some young people who are disappointed mm -hmm. because they couldn't do it what you are doing after two months mm -hmm. uh, i would say what okay what i i see very often uh, as as a common mistake mm -hmm. is that uh, people start to to put them themselves into the center of the attention way too early, so they show up on the internet and they expect people to watch their work, mm -hmm. to look at me, look at me, I'm here, I'm I'm doing this and that. At the later on it works later on if you are very popular, so I don't know if I see Anna Vidovich on a thumbnail, I'm gonna click. Because yeah. <laughs> it's on a video which I, I'm going to mm -hmm. click. And, uh, but at the beginning, no one knows who you are. So what you should be focusing on instead is the value you provide. Mm -hmm. The value you provide and the, um, something you give to people. Something that makes them uh, stay. Something that makes them uh, feel they... Either they learned something or they got some value. You have to make it about people first. I think this is something you also do here to... It's, I mean, it's a, like a, a very strong point of your channel to give value to people, not just mm -hmm. showing off how... You know, the, imagine two types of content. Showing off how cool guitar you have or giving people perspectives about yeah. about very amazing different guitars. So that's... that's the same guitars from two very different point of view. And that's what helped me at the first place. So, so the quality of the content. The quality say. and how yeah. you are making content for people, mm. not for brands, not for an algorithm. Because uh, algorithm, algorithm is people. Mm. If your video won't get through, it's, uh, it's not the algorithm, it's the people who didn't watch it. You know, we can we can blame the algorithm forever, but it's people who didn't mm -hmm. click eventually. And that's right. why algorithm realized, okay, it's not that interesting. So you have to find a way to provide value to real value to people. And and that's the hardest part maybe. Because sometimes we think we already know that what we are talking about is valuable, but we have to find a way uh, to make people listen and to make people notice and understand. I think that would be the biggest thing um, I would, yeah, I, I would say.
this is one of the biggest lessons I learned. Yeah, and this is, I think, also the most difficult part of it. To You have to think about it. Okay, what can I do to have an impact, have a positive impact on people? What can I create? Um, what kind of content you can create that that you make people to watch it and not to skip the video or the picture yes and to want to and learn more and know more and and just to be to get in interested yeah yeah mm -hmm. exactly cool sounds good so you have um, explained to us how you have found your own way um, to living from the music and I think it's also important to people uh, for people to know of course it's not not the only way it doesn't mean that everyone um, is suitable to this way what you have chosen mm -hmm. there are some people who can yeah just give concerts it, it's yeah every way is valid yeah yeah yeah, yeah. every so, way is valid and you have to respect of course every every way of having incomings and uh, living as a musician. I think yeah. I think the most important is that everyone is doing their best to to be, you know, the, the most important is to be a valuable part of this community. Mm -hmm. And if someone is doing that, I don't care how they are doing it as long as I know that they are doing to, th their best to to provide value, to bring value into this community. I respect that. So I respect I respect um, concert artists. I respect recording artists. I respect um, teachers, and and everyone who find their own way uh, to yeah to live live in this community. I think these are the perfect words to, <laughs> to close to end this podcast. Respect everyone. Respect for everyone. Respect everyone. <laughs> yeah, and. Um, is there anything what you want to say to our audience? I think you have already said quite a lot. You mean? Quite, no, not, you not mean quite I'm talking a lot? A lot. No, you no, mean no, no. I'm talking a lot? <laughs> cut! We will cut it. <laughs> will cut it. No, it was a pleasure to have you here Thank you. and to share your experience and your thoughts as someone who, yeah, has a very big community, mm -hmm. uh, online community. And I think it's also very interesting for people, uh, or, or I hope it was interesting for people to to listen to your uh, thoughts and experience. And yeah. So Thank you so much for having me. You're it was a very pleasure. welcome. Thank and you. Uh, by the way, we have, a, we have had a very nice recording session with Beatrix. I'm Indeed. not sure it, if the concert has been already published or if it will come in the after this podcast mm -hmm. uh, we will see but it was a lot of fun and she played incredibly nice thank you <laughs> so go check it out <laughs> check it out the link is uh, somewhere, somewhere here Zikast <laughs> Zikast podcast <laughs>